Uh, so gra grab a seat. Let's let's. So let me remind you on about something really fast. Uh, Okay, hang on. Let me, I'll just remind you. So remember, the, there's one attendance sheet per section. So like when one of the corner people get it, here, here, you, you all just hang on to it, okay? And you, you all are going to get two attendance sheets because we're going to start sending the master up this way. Um, Doe's on top of that. And, and when you have with the master, don't take a photo of it, okay? Like just move it along. Sign it and move it along. Um, okay. So, Matt, you are on, my friend. Hey, hey, grab a seat. Um, this is Matt from, you can come over to the middle, bro, from Shavers Creek. And he has, uh, they're, they're, we're looking for volunteers to be an outdoor school counselor. So can you just say something about what, what that means? Well, hang on, hang on. Well, hey, can you, hey, in the back, can you just kill the volume on the stream for just a second? a week with them at this camp uh, learning about each other and nature for the week uh, stuff they would normally be learning in school it has a really big impact on the fifth graders and for all of you uh, it's a two credit class and accounts for two GHW credits you need three to graduate so you do one week of outdoor school and you get two GHW credits so you would miss a week of classes uh, living there if you ever been to a summer camp or worked with youth or worked outdoors uh, you understand it's a really valuable experience if you've never done that it's a great short experience uh, to learn about that there's a lot of career options in the outdoors with people uh, with youth that kind of thing uh, if you've never done anything like before that's totally fine you don't need any knowledge about the outdoors no special gear uh, it's for everyone. If you're kind of on the fence, a lot of people say, you know what, I'll give it a shot, and you have, end up having a real good time. Uh, we do it every fall and spring. A lot of people come back and do it again for credit in the spring. Some go on to be the teachers and teach the basic ecosystem science. Uh, anyone can do it. Uh, it's a really cool opportunity. Uh, the application is due next Thursday. We only have so many spots available. We go to a lot of different classes and a lot of different majors from uh, WFS and education and social and all these kind of things uh, to apply. Um, and we need about uh, 60 men and 60 women for the different boys and girls cabin groups. And uh, we always get good people from Social 119 and professors that understand uh, the impact of this program. I really appreciate having us come here. And uh, people end up sometimes changing their majors. We always get feedback like, this is the best week I had at Penn State, that kind of thing. So really proud to be a part of it, and I uh, hope you consider it. Dude, nice. Yeah, nice. Hey, and, and the, the, the service hours, if, you, if someone happened to have, I don't want to promote this, but if they had like an underage or something, that's the service hours, right? Work yeah, so 70, 75 volunteer community service hours. You're there all week. We feed you all week. It's great. I love the salad bar. It's like the healthiest I eat all year. So, um, no, it's a lot of fun. Uh, go to the website. Go to the QR code. Check it out. Um, thanks a lot. Cool. Thanks, bro. Yep. Appreciate it. Yep. Hey, um, and... And we have flyers down here, so you can get these after class if you want. Okay, are we ready? 
Um, hey, so today, today's class, it's a, I'm, I'm calling it What's the Problem? And I want you to, um, you know, you, you've, one, one thing that I like to do in this class is be, well, I'm, I'm just naturally a bit of a contrarian. So I didn't say much about this. I haven't said much about it, but, you know, I'm, I've just always been that person who, when someone takes kind of really a, a much more liberal approach with me, I'll just come back with a conservative approach to, say, a social problem or something. Um, if, you, you know, if, you, if you're really uh, pro-choice, then, and you know, you're talking to me as a real pro-choice person, then I'm just going to come up with all sorts of um, thoughts and ideas and arguments from, from a different perspective. I, I've always been like that, not in a really mean way, um, I don't, you know, in that annoying kind of way, but I'm just kind of like that. And if you're, if you're conservative, lean in that direction, I'll be more uh, on the left. Uh, but one thing that I do like to do is just ask, like, what's the problem? Like, we, we, you know, we live in this world where it's really easy to use social media to point out problems, social problems, and all sorts of, it's just that everything's a problem, you know, and we're just constantly pointing that out. I don't know. You know, I look on social media and it's just everybody's snarking about something. And it just feels uh, sometimes overwhelming. And so I, I just thought, let me, let me do that in today's class. Okay, so um, can, you, can we go to the next slide? So listen, bro, can you come up here for a hot minute? Do, can you give him a microphone? So last class, remember... What you, you were, what, 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 oh, you talked about this word. Yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah. Hey, oh, yeah, I did. It's about being a racist, a word that people use in a derogatory I or believe, racist way. I believe that had a racist connotation to it, or yeah. at least from the way I experienced it when I was in Korea. Okay, and, 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 and you are Korean American, you were born in Korea. Yeah. yeah. So, I, so I got quite a number of emails from Korea with people, <laughs> dude. You have fans in Korea now, bro. Haters. No, 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 it's all good. It's all good. And they were just saying, like, hey, listen, it's really important that, that you understand, because, you know, this is how I learn about anything. I get emails every day from people who tell me, regardless of what it is that I'm talking about, people are telling me, hey, you, next time you talk about that subject, you should think about this or you should think about that. And it's really good for me because, you know, I'm... My job is to have to know so many different things about, about so, so much about so many different things. And the fact is, the world's really complex. I don't have enough lives to live to, to, to try to learn the things that I would like to learn. And so what I, what I get to know is a little bit about everything. But that means I can't say too much about... There, there, are, there are a few things I can say a lot about, but uh, I can't say too much without whatever it is, but I get people to send me emails. So people sent me emails. And, you know, one thing they said that's really important is that Hyung, the elder brother piece, right? It's not just brother, but elder brother is really important. And it, the people in Korea started using this toward, like, athletes and hip-hop artists and back in the day, back when it was really first starting to be used, right? And in that sense, it, it was, and, and, and I'm hearing from a lot, a lot of Koreans, but in a, in a positive way with a positive inflection. It, with that logic, I feel like, you know, you should say the same for like white chunks or like Latin, uh, you know, well, Hispanic chunks. Well, here's youngs. the thing though, right? Here's the thing, like you, every group is gonna take, this is what I was saying to you the other day, right? Every group is gonna take, you're gonna take certain language, certain words and identity words, and you're gonna, they're gonna be different for each group. Like we do that in English, right? Like we, so, we don't equalize how we categorize different groups of people. You know, like Native oh, yeah. Americans and are, are different than... S slang's different. The slang is yeah. going to be different, and we're going to use it in a different way. So um, the other thing is that what, what is really interesting and has been interesting for me is, like, Koreans were introduced to black Americans in the war, and then for a long time just really no black people, very little even white people. I mean, Korea was very isolated, but... But then suddenly there's a much more of a black immer immersion or emergence in Korea, and I see that. And I've had so many conversations with black people living in Korea for a long period of time. And like my 
students, we had four students, five actually, who were there with us in the summertime. I have not, I, I have not met a Korean who lives in Korea, and I'm just saying this, right, who could tell me of a single problematic or negative experience which I found really interesting. And I think from that conversation the other day, for a society that seems to focus on brightness and like, not whiteness, not being white, right? But brightness, you would think, and I think Tay was saying this, that there would be more negativity, like more racism, more anti-black stuff. And like, I was really surprised. And, and when, you know, after I talked to so many black people in Korea, like, whoa, you don't get any, you, don't, you can't tell me a single negative story? Because that's surprising. Although. What, what is also not, not surprising is if I go and ask like all the Muslim students here, you know, we think about Islamophobia in the United States and there's so much Islamophobia, but the truth is if I walk around, if I ask for, I'm not going to do it now, we'll do it later, but if I ask for Muslim students to tell me a story of Islamophobia here since they arrived in the United States, I might get one hand to go up in the air. Like this is what I mean, like we talk about stuff a lot, but, but it's really not as problematic or bad as we often talk about it. So anyway, I, I that's a surprising like thing for me. the external racism is kind of like not welcomed anymore, just regardless of the country nowadays. Yeah. But certainly the you know, more subtle, more yeah. intrusive kind of like sort of racism yeah. is still prevalent and even in states or Korea. Yeah, or everywhere Korea. in the world, yeah. No, I'm with you on that. But it's also hidden a lot of times. But for me, this is, I've been doing this for 40 years. So if you tell me, hey, I had this experience, I'm going to hear that very differently than if you tell somebody else. Because I'm going to hear that experience from the context. So if I'm talking to someone in Korea, let's say who's black, and I'm like, hey, tell me about something. And they're like, no, nah, I haven't had any negative experience. I'm like, hey, listen, man, hold on. What about this? What about that? What about this over here? What about that? Like, I'm really going to dig in because I know how to dig in. You know what I mean? In ways that may be something that they themselves don't even see or recognize. But, but for you, anyway, I want to have, I want to do another thing with you. I want to talk about your experience. All right. not, 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 we won't do it now, but I want to do a, a stream and then I want to have, I want to talk to you and have Koreans respond to you. It'll be really cool. So we, you and I will do that. We'll do a one on one no, thing. I mean, not able to. I may not be able to go back to Korea after that. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. You'll be fine. Trust me. You're fine. I got you, man. You're a good. You're a good thinker. You're an interesting person, and you like the Rolling Stones, bro. Oh yeah, old rock baby. Well, it does have a pot leaf right there. Yeah, still. Yeah. All good right. Stuff. We'll overlook that. All right, man. Wait, what's your name again? Uh, the name's Ju Hyun. Ju Hyun. Yeah. All right. It's dude. a Korean name. Thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, let's go with, uh, wait, our, wait, hang on, no, yeah, yeah, you and Linnea, it's Linnea and Astoria, okay, you can, we're going to go to Case, you can sit on the, you go to the next, yeah, we'll just stay right there. Um, so listen, um, this, this, is, this is really, what we're going to talk about is really, really, really interesting, I think, okay? And it, and it kind of stems in, in part from what we just talked about. So I'm going to tell you a story here. Wait, so first off, tell, say your name and your background. Hello, um, my name is Linnea. I'm uh, in my third year here, majoring in Crim and Soch. Dude, so sh all right. <laughs> and and you and you were president of the NAACP here, right? I am. And you want to be a lawyer? Yes. Oh man, you are perfect for this. Okay, awesome. Hi everyone. I am Astoria. I'm from Beijing, China, and I'm a sophomore in computer science. And you and but wait, hang on. But it's it's Yung Yung. Oh yeah, that's my Chinese name. How do you how, wait? Hang. On. How do you say it? Uh, Yun Yun. Yun Yun? Yun Yun, yeah, you need to say it like you are dropping something on the ground, like Yun Yun. Can you do that? <laughs> Try it, yeah. Yun Yun. Yun Yun? Did I butcher it? It's kind of like that. <laughs> say it again, say it again. It's okay. Yun Yun. Yun Yun. Yeah, that's yun. similar, yeah, that's yeah. good. 
Dude, I, I love language. I really, <laughs> listen, one of the reasons that I'm, I, you know, I'll sometimes just say something in Spanish or get people to talk a little bit is because I just think we live in this multicultural, multinational world, and I feel like it's really important, those of us who learn languages, but like in the United States, maybe you'll disagree, I don't know. Do you speak any languages? Really, I used to speak Polish when I was little, but not so much anymore. And I took Spanish for five years, but I. You, but you, eh. habla español un poquito? Eh, <laughs> not really. Dude, do, no, hang on. Like At least years respond years in Spanish. No. <laughs> <laughs> no mucho. <laughs> Look, the thing is, I want to try to help break those barriers down. Like, I want to help us to have conversations in here about all sorts of things, but also that it's okay to speak another language and to butcher it or not butcher it. You did a nice job with, but Astoria. Okay, so, um, so here's, go to the first slide. Okay, so this word, have you heard of this word? No. You have no, no idea what this word is? No. Okay, so do you know what filler words are? Yes. What filler words do you use often? Like, um, things like that. Yeah, I think I use like a lot, right? Do I? You would know if you. Once I get going, I, I think I say like a lot. I try to break my. I try to stop that. Okay, so this is a filler word in Mandarin. Okay, and um, as a filler word, it sounds like another word. And people, there's one professor in particular, um, there are several who have been reprimanded for this word. One guy was suspended because he is a Chinese scholar and was talking to his students. And his students complained about, this guy was a really well-known Chinese scholar, and his students complained about him. And the university suspended him. And they did this big investigation because he used a Mandarin word and another language that is a word, okay? So, um, so I'll be really careful about it because I don't want to get fired from Penn State. So uh, I won't even attempt the word, but Astoria, you will. So as a filler word, like how? <laughs> well, they can't fire you, right? <laughs> But this is a word in your language, in Mandarin, right? Yes, how com is. How common is it? Okay, so the word in Mandarin, it means that. So just think about how, how often you use the word that in English. That's how, that's how often we use that in Chinese, yeah. So, do you, so just from what you know, do you have any, any questions for Astoria? Do you find it like difficult to use that word here? Oh, dude, dude. Dang, that's awesome. I feel like I, I never did, uh, I feel like I didn't really think of it like that way in, in America. Like, I, I use Chinese in front of like other Chinese people, so, so, so I'm not worried about like other people misunderstanding it to some like other meanings. Mm -hmm. You're not worried about it, but I want to say that I know of instances, quite a number of instances, where Chinese people have been uh, attacked by people for using, that, this, for using this word in a, in a conversation, you know, and people thinking, they're, hey, they're using a different word. Do you have any other questions for her? That first one was a good one, so you got to try to top that. Do you know anybody who has had an issue using that word in public before? I can't think of any case, like, from what I know. I feel like it's not, like, taken that seriously in China or, like, among Chinese people. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I never heard of, like, anything, like, an, anyone having trouble speaking that word. Although I have seen some stuff, like, online, like, people, I don't know, just making fun of it. You know, not offensive way. But, but, you, you, but, it's, but you use it a lot in the way that we use um and like and so on but you're going to yeah, use it all the yeah, time we, we, we like use it. consecutively even like i say um 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 or like 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 kind of thing like it could be you know we sometimes use filler here's a 
how about this one? Do you, do Chinese, did you ever learn that in the United States this word could be a problem? Yeah, I mean, there was a time it was like viral in the Chinese, like on the Chinese internet because like there was a really popular Chinese singer who made a song and in the song, like in the lyrics, he added so many that words, like just randomly. So that song went viral like in China, because people were saying that like some people were offended because that song was on YouTube and some people were like, that sounded like that word and it's not okay. Okay, do you have another question? Not off the top of my head. Can I think for a second? Are you familiar with any racial slurs targeted towards African Americans in the United States of America? Oh, you are so, that was, <laughs> That was so good. <laughs> I, I whispered to her. This is what I, can I tell them what I whispered to you? Yeah. In what you just said? I said, ask her if she knows what she's learned about the N word. And you said, <laughs> say it again. Are you familiar with any racial slurs targeted against African Americans? You're going to be United an awesome States. lawyer. So professional. <laughs> I am. I think I'm pretty aware of like all the things that I shouldn't say in America. Yeah. Where did where, where, where'd you learn that? Like, where do you learn them? Well, I mean, I, well, I mean, I have only been in America for a year, but I used to like watch so many sitcoms, like movies, and like read stuff online about America. Yeah. So I feel like I have a general like sense of what's the political correctness it is like in America, in its environment, yeah. So, Linnea, you, you, you have to be wanting to hear this word, right, in, in Mandarin. I mean, you gotta hear it. I am on the edge of my seat right now. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, do, do us a favor. Tell, uh, wait, do you have a third, do you have, do you have another uh, microphone? Can you give it to a Mandarin speaker? Who's a Mandarin speaker? in class, who, who could have a conversation. Can you give it to this guy over here? All right, bro, so, so here's what you're gonna do. Can you, um, you got him on camera? You got him, you're good? Bro, yeah, what's, what's, what's your name? This is, is this on? All right, my name's Andrew. Andrew? Yeah. All right, man. Can you and Astoria have a conversation between you and use this word? Not, like, just don't use it. Don't, like, emphasize it, you know what I mean? But use the, put the word in there, and, and you're going to see if you can hear it, okay? Just okay. talk for, like, 30 seconds back. You know, ask him some things. So you can and talk just, about anything? Anything you want. You can, literally in this class, because... I, not very many of us speak Mandarin. You, you absolutely could talk about what an idiot I am. You could do that. Why don't you actually do that? Talk about what a moron the professor is, and then throw this word in. Okay, okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, let's start. You think that professor is a little bit He doesn't know how to respond. <laughs> That's all right, bro. You can call me a moron. No. Dude, you got to be louder. <laughs> all right. I mean, what? I said that that very You can say it so easily. Hmm? Go ahead. I didn't hear it. Did you hear it? Yeah. You did hear it? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, damn, all right. Was it, it, did it really sound like they were dropping the end bomb uh, I mean, yes and no. I mean, you hear the first half of it. I don't really hear the second. Like, okay, I don't do, hear the end of it. Okay, do it again. Say something to him again. Let me hear it. I want to see if I can hear it. I'm going to turn my ear, okay. earpiece up. Uh, uh, oh, it's... Uh, uh, 
，不知道怎么说。哎，我真的不知道怎么说，我是就是呃，美国出生的，所以我我可以听，我可以说一点中文，但是呃，我没有什么怎么说，我没有很。Do do what's he? Is he calling me a moron? All right. Yeah. Yeah, 对对不起，我的中文不是在，我可以听懂，我可以说一点。Did you hear that? So, 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 could you speak up? I couldn't hear. I can't hear you. 啊啊，好好，我我的中文不，我我就是在美国出生的，所以我可以听懂中文，我可以说一点，但是，呃，我没有很多，我不知道怎么说。Oh. So how's his Mandarin? Uh, he's. I feel like he learned Chinese somewhere, but he didn't really live in China. Yeah, he's Chinese American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, but that's pretty good though. Awesome, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning Chinese right Dude, now. Dude, you're, you're learning Chinese right now? Dude, your grandparents would be proud of you, man. I mean, half of them are dead, so. All right, well, the other half would be proud. Yeah. The, 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 other, the half that are dead are rolling in their graves over the fact that you don't speak better. But the ones that are still here, they're all right. You're good. All right, man. Hey, so listen. So here's a question, right? Did, so you so you heard it, right? Yeah. So what do you, what do you? Okay. So you're part of of. So this this is a word that. So you you have these Americans, who say. They hear Chinese speaking, right? And they have said people have said like, hey, you shouldn't use that word. So this would be, like, telling you, hey, you can't say you should never say um or like. You know. Yeah, I mean, if, I personally think that if you're not saying the actual slur, then I don't see the issue with it. If you're speaking in a language that uses a word that sounds like it, it's not, I mean, you didn't make the language. Yeah, you got, ten, what is it, 10,000 characters in Mandarin or something? So it's like you, 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 they could pull one out, it wouldn't really matter. But, but let, me ask you, let me ask you this question. This way you're really good for this uh, section right here, this case study. So... As part of the NAACP, like you know, one of the things that you do, and the organization has done, is really s speak out, organize on behalf of the rights of people of African ancestry in the United States. Okay, and I, not just African Americans, but you know, Afro Caribbeans and now Africans who are here in the U.S. So it's not just African Americans. For you, when people took a couple cases like this to the NAACP and people didn't tell them, dude, go home, like stop. Like what's your problem? Chinese are allowed to speak Chinese. They didn't do that. And so I'm just wondering for you as someone who's gonna be a lawyer, at what, what point in time do you in, say like, listen people, you, you have to gr like, I don't know, grow up, like I don't know, like like I just said it there. This is unacceptable to complain about something like this. So can you maybe, as a future leader? I think that to bring a case to an organization like the NAACP, for example, which stands for, like, primarily focuses on black Americans, but also does stand for other minorities, mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. bring a case like that and to have an issue with a word in another, like a quote unquote foreign language, I feel like that is so problematic just because you're kind of like going to the people who support that group of people and are like, hey, this is a problem. Um, I do think that the issue maybe, and I'm not well versed in this specific case, but if there wasn't, let's say like a recording of whatever professor said it, right? Yeah. So there's the question of, okay, did he really slip something in there or was he actually like saying something that was controversial? Well, in this one case, it was a, right. there was a recording and he was, was teaching one. people about, in Mandarin, about words and talking about filler words and talking about all sorts of things, right? Yeah. I, think that, I think that's problematic. I think especially because people who don't understand other languages or don't understand cultures that are foreign to them already are like, I feel like we have this um, apprehension or like this, what's the word? We're not as willing to learn about them and accept mm. them. So mm -hmm. we're immediately ready to like jump on it. Oh my God, well, I don't understand what they're saying. Maybe they're saying something about me. Maybe they're yeah. saying something about, I don't know, you and calling you a moron and you would never know. Like yeah. it's, 
people so. call me moron, moron all the time, and I don't know, so I'm, go, I'm cool with that. Yeah, but this is the thing. I think you really hit it. The reason I'm asking you, one reason I'm asking you these questions is because there are a lot of people who, in, in the U.S., people my age, around my age, who just feel like you all have lost your damn minds. This woke culture, this whole whatever it is, it's like you all have lost your damn minds. And what I find is that when I bring people up to sit on the desk and they talk, just like, you know, the two of you are talking, and we're going to come back to you, Astoria. But as you're talking, it's like people are surprised that college students are actually really thoughtful and really smart and that you would say something like you just said. Because the idea, the cases that we hear that rise to the level of like CNN or MSNBC or Fox or something are these extreme cases that sounds like you all have lost your damn minds. And, and I don't think that's the case. I think you're actually very reasonable and thoughtful, but some people lose their minds. I have family like that. <laughs> yeah. um, so if I seem reasonable now, it's because I have practice arguing about stuff like this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I, I understand like firsthand, I have like older generation family who are very much like, all of this is ridiculous. Um, very anti, I guess, like pronouns or transgender identities, things like that. Got They're you. very like stuck in their ways about things. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. so like, if you were raised or you grew up in a time where other cultures were like scary or things like that, you're gonna be stuck in your ways where you're gonna reject them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got you. And do you have family members who are, re who are pretty radical, like on the left? I wouldn't say radical, no. But you, like, you have friends. I mean, you must know people who are yeah. pretty hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes what happens in a case like this is people will hear a story and then say, oh, can you listen, man, let me tell you what my social 119 professor said, right? And then they maybe twist it a little bit, but then you tell it to your friend and your friend's like, oh my God, this guy said, and then they change it even more. And by the time it kind of gets back to me, it's as though... I'm speaking, I said something in Polish when in fact I said something in uh, a Tagalog. I don't know, you know, and, and it's crazy. And I think that one of, this is one of the things that we have to be really thoughtful and reasonable. And always we start with the idea of, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What actually happened? Were you there? And how well do you remember? And very often what I find is these kind of extreme crazy stories are like, okay, this is kind of nutty. But, but for you, it's really important for someone like you, right? Because you are the future in these ways of, of, of law and, 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 and uh, social activism as someone who's part of NAACP, because in a way it's an activist, not entirely, but it is, you know. And, you got, and it's coming upon you to be reasonable, you know. Yeah. So, um, for you, right, how, wh what are you studying again? Uh, I'm studying computer science. Yeah. And you, um, so how do you, what, do any just final thoughts about what I just said to L Linnea, right? Any, any thoughts about what I said to Linnea? Oh, wait, no, let me actually ask you this. Before coming here, did you have a feeling that how, how did you think about black people, black Americans, versus how you thought about white Americans? Can I assume you thought differently? I feel like they're just all Americans. Like, Wait, is that, are, you, is, hang on, are you being politically correct, or are you really saying? Listen, for example, here, here's what you need to know. Americans, by the way, most people in other countries, really, most people in other countries, you're just an American. You really are. Like, you, you really doesn't, this is the thing. This kind of thing with, it could be China, it could be whatever. Once you're an American, you're an American. So you could be black. You, can, you, know, you could go to Ghana or Nigeria and be like, hey, I'm African American. Well, you're mixed, but nonetheless. Do you identify, how do you identify? Like, like racially? If someone, yeah, if someone just said, hey, what are, or do you say mixed? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but if you, if you, let's say you really identified as African-American, I mean, in Nigeria and Ghana, West Africa, places would be like, you're, what do you mean African-American? You're American, you know what I mean? You're just an American. So I'd ask you that question, are you being politically correct or are you saying, no, I really, you're just American, you're a bunch of Americans. Well, well I mean, I, I know there's some like, 
kind of racism in China, but for me, I really think that like everyone's equal and stuff. <laughs> no, but I'm not asking that. I'm asking when you thought about coming to America, uh -huh. and you think about this guy right here and this woman right here. Uh -huh. Did you, what perception? Did you think about them differently, or did you look at both of them and just say, "Oh no, they're just there's." Um, did you think in your mind's eye, like, "No, no, no, this, they're just Americans." Well, I mean, they do belong in like different like racial group, and they may have like different like cultural background and stuff. But uh -huh. they're, they're just generally like people to me, like American people. Okay, all right, yeah. American people. All right, cool, dude. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Keep rocking it. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, that, I think that one of the really cool things about, about being, um, I don't know, just about having the experiences is, uh, um, I don't know, it's just, Hang on, what did you think of that? What do you think of the word? The word? Yeah, the word. Have you heard of that before? Heard the um, word before or the controversy? No, but I know there's equivalents. In like, Wait, oh, you're on, yeah. Talk really. I know there's like um, other words that do sound similar in other Asian languages. Yeah. Like I had a friend who, I had a friend who like really liked K-pop and there is a word that's like similar mm -hmm. and she would always like freak out when seeing it, I'm like, no, it's just Korean. Yeah, yeah, the Koreans aren't really trying to secretly throw in some racist shit in your direction. You know, you know what I mean? It's like it's coded, coded language. All right, so Danielle, we give us what's what's your give us your bio. Um, I'm Danielle, I'm a third year geography student, and I'm from Maryland. From Maryland? Uh-huh. Trinity. Um, I'm Trinity, I'm a sophomore, and I'm studying biobehavioral health, and I'm from Philadelphia. Yo, man, and Trinity has a sister who is really cool. Trinity might be cool, but her sister's really cool. In fact, her sister's so cool, she used to work for us, and my wife and I wanted to adopt her at one point. She's so cool. We're just like, we just want her around, man. But she would have gotten free tuition or a 75% discount. So whatever, yeah. Okay, so listen, we're going to, I want to, we're going to talk about, we want to talk about hair straightening. And mostly, no, go, yeah, go back. Mostly in the black community. I mean, mostly with women, I mean, because men can straighten their hair, but very, it's like not, it's not a thing. So here, so the, the issue is, like, what's the problem, okay? So I just want to, I want to ask somebody, um, dude, can I ask you? I want to ask you, you're on, man. What, what's the problem? We just think about the pro, we're going to talk about the problem, whatever it is, right? What's the problem with st black women straightening their hair? I don't think there is one. I mean, you can do whatever you want, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so you can do whatever. So I don't mean problem like problem like against it. I mean, what's what are what's like two issues related to black women straightening straightening their hair? Like, what, what's what's the controversy, or what's something to, you would think about? It? And you're a, you're you know you're as a white guy, right? Where are you from? What's your name, by the way? I'm Blake. I'm from Blake? Pittsburgh. Blake. Yeah. Balake, yeah. right? <laughs> You've seen that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Balake. Uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Pittsburgh. All right, dude. So just give us a couple things with black women straightening their hair. Do you have anything? Do you know anything about it? Why me, bro? Nah, oh. just because you know, because, because you're an average white guy, right? And... I wouldn't expect you to know anything, but you might. You might have some thought about it. And so you're, but you're average. Like, you're not in the spot. You're not expected to know. I don't think you're going right. to know. I would be surprised if you had anything to say. Because why would you? Do you have anything? Um, I've heard people make the claim that, that they're trying to 
appear white, but I don't really think that's true. Okay, no, no, hang on. It's not about that. You've heard people say that. Okay, yeah. trying to be white. Danielle. I mean, when I look at her, I'm thinking, yeah, with that hair, you almost look white. You, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, no, but hang on. Exactly. Okay, there's one. What else have you heard? That's all I got. Dude, that was a lot, man. Thanks, bro. That was cool. That was good. Okay, listen, man. Okay. See, this is the thing. Like, we, we train ourselves to not have these conversations. So tell me about... Can you just say, okay, can you, can you just tell Blake about hair straightening? What's he need to know? Uh, First off, what can, what can, hang on, can you go to the next slide? What, what type of hair do you have, your natural hair? That's a really hard question. I think maybe close to about... Hold, hold it really tight. Close to about like three... Maybe three C. Three B, maybe three C. Yeah. Trinity, what is your? No, oh, mine's is four A naturally. Four A naturally. By the way, bro, that's that's not Trinity's real hair. Did you know that? It's a wig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That... A wig and a. So Dude. a wig is like one big piece of hair like if I put this pull this hat back it's it's one big chunk of hair all sewn together on like a cap a weave is like you braid your hair and then you sew tracks onto your own braided hair but your your natural hair how long is your hair my natural hair is probably like shoulder length curly right right now it is yeah. so do you and you and how do you have it up under your wig so underneath this it's just like I have two big braids, like just braided back my natural hair. Uh huh, uh huh. So, but Danielle, so your natural hair is is three A or three three B maybe three C. So how do you how do you straighten it? What do you do? So, usually my hair is actually like I either get a relaxer or a perm, which really close. for which for black people that tends to at least. For me, it makes my hair much straighter. So mm -hmm. I don't actually have to like use a flat iron or a curling iron to straighten my hair all the time. But for about like eight weeks, when I wash it and dry it, it'll go back to being pretty straight naturally. Mm -hmm. Or at least with like a bit of blow drying and uh -huh. some like flat ironing. Uh -huh. So doing it using the relaxer. And is it, how, how long does it take? <laughs> you, <laughs> you have a soft voice. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, how long does what take? Yeah, it's just straightening. I like, can't keep it straight. Okay. Like, how do, your treatment that you do? Well, I guess, uh, so I actually have extensions in right now. Uh -huh. And the difference between extensions and a weave is that like a weave is pretty much everything but extensions means that you have like some of your real hair out and for when i get my extensions like redone every eight weeks that can be about like four to five hours uh -huh. but when washing my hair um the time it takes to like wash and then let it dry and then like strain it out that will take about like three to four hours okay so i have a question for both of you then bro do you have a question for them either of them Not now, but if I do, I'll let dude let me know <laughs> all right so i have a question for you both of you so you, i mean there's there there is historically been I, you know by the way if you look at like 4c right so the initial chart was made with just like eight, 4a and 4b and then by do you know who made this chart first the first person do you know who did it it was a hairdresser for oprah winfrey right who actually put this together and categorized hair in this way and put those those numbers and letters to it um but if you look at say 4c any of the four and you imagine that you you got to straighten that imagine what it takes to actually get that straight and to hold it straight this, this is that's not easy to do like it's really intense it's really hard a lot of chemicals lots of things so in the black community there are a lot, a lot of women who are like 
it's, it's go, go natural, man. Like, what's the natural? Just go natural. I mean, it's, this is not like we're in straight here. So why, can you say something about that? Why not, do why not go natural? Like why just go natural to choose why? Like, yeah, so like, you know, he, Blake is saying, you know, like somehow it's like, yeah, just be who you are. Like, yeah, go natural. Um, it, for me, I tend to, I don't know. I feel like for in the black community, it's a lot about like, we kind of switch up our looks a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's many different ways you can do your hair. And I feel like with straightening, a lot of black women now use it as like a way to trim their hair, keep their hair maintained. Um, and sometimes it's just for a different look. But now it's become like a thing where like, it's not... I would, say, I would say we don't really straighten our hair as often anymore. I think it's become, like, more of a thing to go natural, which I guess it's, like, just because it better protects our hair. I feel like straightening straightening is damaging to our hair. So. Yeah, so it's easier to just put a wig on. Yeah. And, and for you, you know, I mean, it's kind of like we were talking about plastic surgery on Tuesday, but in a, in a way that's really a permanent thing or, or like getting a tattoo, getting a... Temporary tattoo is one thing, but you know, you, it's a way to kind of switch things up. Yeah, so for me, um, personally, my hair is extremely thin. In the past, it was always thin and short, and after wearing extensions for a couple of years, it's now been, like, it's, it was able to grow a lot longer, which is good. But because I have that thinness, going natural doesn't make that much sense for me because mm. I don't have a lot of, like, hair to work with. Uh -huh. Like, you see all these um, styles online and you hear people talking about, like, you should go natural, you should go natural. And I think it should be everybody's choice, but regarding my hair and just its thinness, it's really hard for me to go natural because there's just not a lot to work with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, hey, by the way, how is it, to have this conversation. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's good, yeah. Yeah, I think it's good for people. So can you go to the next slide? So, um, so 2017, the U.S. Army just passed a ruling saying that black women in the military, in the Army, are allowed to wear their hair natural, Okay. Before 2017, the ruling in the military is like, no, 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 you got to, you, you can't be natural. You can't have an afro, for example. No afros in the military. No, you know, go back. You know, if you look at, if you look at, say, 4C, what happens, and this is what's really important, historically speaking, do you know, do you either of you know the, the purpose of, you know, curled, coiled, we, it's like kinked. There's, you know, like 4B is kind of kinky hair. But most hair on people of, of, who, who have tight curls, it's not kinked, it's curled. So this is a thing, right? People talk about, oh, so-and-so has kinky hair. No, no, so-and-so probably has curled hair. So that's the first thing. But secondly, do you know the, value, the evolutionary value of having tight curls and kinks? Do either of you know? My guess would be that, like... Um you know, back in Africa, because the sun is always beating down and there's not a lot of rain in a bunch of regions. Yeah. Like, it could be better protection for the top of your head, but also just, like, I know my hair personally soaks up water like a sponge. Yeah. So that helps with, like, hydration, maybe. Dude. Were you going to say the same thing? No. Oh, well, in that case, okay. Yeah, look, you, you want, if you go, remember, remember the map that I put up yesterday. You know, human beings, homo sapiens, homo erectus, we start in Africa. And people don't have baseball caps. You know, you don't, you, no one's wearing a Yankees cap there, my friend. And so you're in the sun, and the sun's intense. And it's not to protect, it's to, it's to protect your brain. It's not about sunburn. It's about the brain. You really got to keep the brain cool. When your brain overheats, it's very much a problem. And so you got to find ways to keep the brain heated. So when you, once, once your hair grows out, when it's tightly cured, look at 4C. When your hair starts growing like 4C, it is going to go like this, out, 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 out. And that means the sun's going to hit the edge of your hair. Like in your case, it would hit, you know, like the top of what would be your hat here. 
and not going to hit your scalp. Whereas me, this gun's going to hit me, and my brain's going to really heat up. And so from an evolutionary perspective, afros, right, is what we call people when you, you, know, you, you let 4C hair grow out, say, for example, it starts to grow, and, it, and then your, hair is, your head is being protected. So it's very much a positive thing from an evolutionary perspective, right? Can you go to the next slide now? So in 2017, the U.S. military said, hey, you all can wear your hair natural which is crazy to me. Like, we're telling the two of you, if you join the army, you join the military, like, you can't, you have to straighten your hair. And so when, Blake, when I said, like, hey, is there any problems to that? Well, here's a problem, that we're telling black, we're telling women who don't have, if you go back, to like, one, one or two hair. We're telling this whole population of people that, like, no, you have to be white. You have, to, you have to live your life as though you're white. This is a thing for lawyers, by the way. The lawyers stop this. One up on the lawyer. So that would be telling the two of you, like, no, 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 you have to straighten. So go to the next slide. And then half of all U.S. states now are, have either passed or are passing laws saying that you cannot, in the workplace, you cannot discriminate against women on the basis of wearing their hair natural. Like, come on, man, you come out of the womb as a black woman, and basically you come out of the womb and immediately you are branded saying, like, oh, well, if your hair starts to curl or kink, y'all are going to have to straighten that out if you want to join the workforce and be treated equally as everybody else. That's deep racism. So when you say, if people who say, oh, racism's been over a long time in the United States or whatever it is, you don't do 2017. That's, that, that's pretty, that to me it seems pretty racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be like saying, you have to wear skin whitener. I don't know what the difference is. Trinity, you want to join the army? Man, you got you to put on a lot of skin whitener, my friend. You're going to have to whiten up. <laughs> and 80% of black women, in one survey that I saw very recently, 80% of black women feel as though they will be discriminated against if they wear their hair natural. And there's plenty of research that we have that, yeah, wearing your hair natural, you're more likely to experience some kind of, more likely, not extreme, you're not definitely going to, but the two of you, like going with a wig or wearing your hair as you're wearing your hair, this, this, this is going to, Danielle wearing her hair like this, whether she wants to or not, is going to benefit her in the workplace. Because, because not in every moment, but often, and that's the racism piece. Like that's, I don't, does that feel like racism? Do you wear your hair natural in part to avoid discrimination? Is that something you think about? No, because it's just way easier for me to wear my hair like this. But huh. I've had conversations about this with my parents. Uh, I've seen it within my school system in general that girls who wear their hair natural, or even if they just get something like box braids, they'll run into some problems where, like, they'll get dress coded for their hair when yeah. it's really shouldn't be a problem. Dude, how do you get dress coded for wearing your hair natural? You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? This is, listen, when people talk about white supremacy, if I could drop that word out there, can I drop the word? And we're good? Are we good on that? White people. Any, like, you if people, when people use a word like white supremacy or white privilege, like we, we're in class four, and I've not said anything about white people or white privilege or white supremacy, anything like that. But this feels to me like it would be an example of white privilege. Get dress coded because you wear your hair natural. Right? And so sometimes, for those of you, especially those of you who are, those of you who are not black, just for a second, if you'll go with me. When you hear someone referencing this, and especially when you hear black people talking about some of these things, and maybe they're talking about some Chinese person dropping the N-bomb when they really weren't, and that sounds really stupid, but sometimes we're talking about things that are real, man. Do you, ever, do you wear your hair like that in part to... Um, for me, I'm someone who tends to wear my hair in protective style, so I'm usually in braids most of the time. Um, but when I do wear my hair natural, I don't really wear it out 
like all one time. I usually try to do like a style where like the front is slicked back or like I have all my hair in a ponytail. I don't know. It just sometimes it seems like well not really anymore, but before when I used to, I used to have like a really big afro when I was in elementary school. Oh, dude, I used can to I wear see like it? A really Send me big, a photo of that. I have okay. a photo from my second grade. Yeah, I used to wear a really big afro, and it tends to make people stare at you. Like it's a little. And it's sometimes uncomfortable, but now that we're kind of in a time where, like, wearing your natural hair isn't as, like, wow, oh, my gosh, she has natural hair. I tend to now wear my curls out a little more, but it's still a little uncomfortable for me. Just because, also, it has a lot of work put into it. You have yeah, to do yeah, a yeah. lot of work to just wear your hair natural every day, and I personally don't have the time for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, uh, my, my brother had probably like three B hair. And my white brother, I'll, I should pull up and bring a photo, in, and he carried his pick with him, and every day he was constantly picking his hair. But he wore it in a big afro, so, you know. Um, uh, awesome. Hey, thanks for the conversation. Yeah. Okay. Feel, anything, any final things you want to say that you feel like people should know? Black women hair. Wait, do we have a question on the stream? Oh, do we have a question from the stream? Here we go. How do you feel about white people who use black hairstyles? All right. White people rocking black hairstyles. You're both laughing. Um, I would tend to say it's not that big of a deal, but it becomes... Oh, it becomes a little big, a bit of a big a deal when it becomes like you're not like, I don't mind you wearing braids in your hair. If that's what you want to do today, go ahead. But also it has been shown that white women wearing braids, it's damaging to their hair. It becomes like there are a lot of white people have to cut off their hair after wearing braids just because it's just not fit for their texture. But I don't mind... White you mean braids. like extensions? Yeah, like wearing weaves and stuff like that. that yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot of weight on their hair just yeah, because yeah, of yeah. the texture of their hair. But I don't mind you wearing braids or wearing weave. That's what you want to do today? Go ahead. Do but, you um, do you. Yeah, it's just, I want to say it's a black. I mean, I guess it is a black hairstyle. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, because it's all globally. These styles are just borrowed and used and whatever. Danielle, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I really only have a problem with it in, like, two scenarios. One is when, like, a white person takes on a black hairstyle and then uses it as an excuse to start, like, acting black and, like, try to, like, use the fact that they have, like, a black hairstyle and are acting different from their old personality in a way that's more, like, stereotypical of black people. I find that really irritating because we're more than just our hairstyle or like how we're perceived in the media. And my other, um, I guess, beef with white people who use black hairstyles is really when like someone will take a black hairstyle but still be racist against black people. Like Mm -hmm. you'll adopt a part of our culture but still hate us at our core. Really, if like you're just some white person getting like box braids or getting dreads, it really doesn't matter to me. But when you like use the fact that you got dreads as an excuse to be rude against black people or to try to adopt like stereotypical black uh, characteristics. You mean like, and then like walking around dropping the end bomb or something. Yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. It's also, it also becomes a problem when someone, it was a recent thing where like, a white woman will get a braided hairstyle that we've been doing for years and it's not acceptable, like you said, in the workplace for me to have straight mm-hmm. backs or just wear my afro out or just... Mm-hmm. But when white women do it, it's it's okay. It's, it's like, okay. oh, it's a, she's doing a new hairstyle. She's so fancy. She didn't, <laughs> she didn't make herself all dolled up today, but it's like we do that every day and it's a problem. But it's it's... Yeah, it's something to, to think about. It does not go unnoticed. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, that's a really a valuable thing for us, to, for people to think about, because that's, it's a, this is the kind of real stuff, you know. It's real when it comes down to discrimination, especially this idea that you can be discriminated against for being who you are. I mean, this is absurd, right? Hey, 
Thanks. Awesome. You guys, you were awesome. Yeah, thanks. That was great. Okay, where? Leonie, who, who, who's the other person? Wait, did the other, did the other? It was you and, do, oh wait, did the other guy not show up? Eric? Do, oh, that's you? Oh, man. Okay, listen, just introduce yourselves really fast, and then we're, if you could, can you take, take them out in the hallway? Just introduce yourself. Um, my name is Leone. I'm a junior. I'm from Miami Beach. And Eric, no, you stay here. You're going to go out that way. Which, to get to introduce your, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Bucks County, PA. Bucks County, dude. All right. Well, you, where are you from, Miami? Awesome. Can the two of you just, Leah will take you out there for a hot minute. You can, you can take the mics. Just turn them off. By the way, when you come back in here, you're gonna be, you're gonna pretend as though you're married, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna talk, and you're gonna pretend. You're gonna talk as though you're married, okay? okay. So just get to know each other out there. All right. In that, in not in that. Okay, so can I, can I get, can, I, can, is there a gay man who's willing to help me with something? <laughs> Any a gay man? It's gotta be a gay man. Dude, is that you? All right, come here. All right. Do you have another mic? All right, bro, here's what I want. What's your name? Dave. Dave? All right. Dude, here's what I want you to do. Pick out. Okay. Um, Dave, I want you to pick. You got to do this really fast, okay? You're going to pick out three men in here who you think are handsome. Wait, no, no, hang on, hang on. Dude, hang on. A white, uh, an, Arab, an Arab guy, a white guy, and a black guy. Arab guy, white guy, black guy. Yep. Do, I, do I, how much time do no, I have? No, you, you got like uh, 90 seconds and tell him to come down to the front. Dude, that's you. Dude. D wait, Dave, is it Dave? Dave, come on, Dave, you're in the front. Yeah, I'd say he's a handsome guy. You can sit on the table, bro. This has nothing to do with being gay. Dude, you are on. Oh, I would have picked him also, man. Dude, all the Arabs are at the top. Yeah. You can just sit on the table, bro. Uh, white shirt, white shirt. Yes, uh, oh, oh, shit. So, oh, crap. Yeah, you, you. Yeah, dude, that yeah. dude right there. Yeah, with the beard. <laughs> totally, man. I would have picked him, too. Dave, nice job. Thanks, man. Your job is done. You can sit down. All right, man. Dude, look at, look at, oh, yo, man, look at this guy. Dude, this guy. Okay, man, what's your, so what's your name? I'm Ryan. Brian or? Ryan. Ryan with an R? All right. I'm Aaron. Eric? Aaron. Aaron. Aaron, okay. Hang on, I didn't have my earpiece up. Ryan, Aaron. And Abdullah. What is it? Abdullah. Abdullah. Yeah. Okay, listen, man. You, got, you can just sit on the table. This had nothing to do with being gay, by the way. Because I just needed three random men up here, and I thought, if we can get Dave to pick them out, you'll, be, you'll look kind of similar. Okay? So just hang tight. All right, let's go. Dude, this guy. Yo, Astoria, who's the most handsome, by the way? Uh, what is it? Do I have From the Chinese. Yeah, you got to pick one of them. Brian. Oh, really? <laughs> Damn. Ryan. Okay, so listen, Eric and Leone. Leone. So your job, so here's what's up. You guys, the two of you, you need a sperm donor, okay? 
because you know for whatever reason Eric can't make it happen and like you know and and you all you need you need sperm and you got three choices here and it's either Ab it's Abdullah right Abdullah Aaron well you don't even know their names they don't matter their, their names are irrelevant so the two of you got to talk through as though you're a married couple like whose sperm are you going to use okay from like looks just yeah like you, it's going to be one of the three so d doesn't doesn't you just got to decide like who are you going to use and like i want you to talk out loud why you would choose one and not another okay got it so first off think just think yourselves like what argument would you make you're going to have to pick one, and then you're going to have to argue to, you're going to have to make an argument to the class as to why you picked that person. And I want you to try to agree on it. Okay, well, if I was using a sperm donor, I guess I would try and pick someone that would create someone that looked like us. Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> Well, that would, that would clearly be Aaron here, like... <laughs> Dude. I know you were thinking they were going to just pick you just just cuz of your sheer handsomeness but why why would that be? I'm just curious. In this world like why I thought like why does it matter in this world? Well, I'm from a big city so I don't really you know, I don't really differentiate people that well, but I personally am not a huge fan of like having to explain myself. I don't like um I mean, I like talking to people, I like asking questions, but I've been taught that like private matters are private, and that would be probably the route that would get me the least confrontation regarding it. The, mm -hmm. Okay, Eric, how about you, man? Uh, I mean, one of these guys is gonna represent you, Yeah. right? <laughs> yes. I'm thinking, I would, personally, I would choose Abdullah, man, but you know. <laughs> Nothing against the other. I don't know if I would... Um, hold, the, hold the mic close. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I would actually hear that much. <laughs> so what about question. what part of you would not care? Like, yeah, this uh, is what well, I... What I'd want, if I had a kid, I'd want him to have a pretty healthy upbringing. And uh, I don't know, I don't want any... Uh, like, I don't think it's controversial to say like if I had the option between having an autistic child or a or a fully functioning child you know I okay maybe uh let me think about this um okay not, dude not, I know I know where you were going there <laughs> I know where you were going go ahead keep going okay keep going yo yo hang on a second dude hang on I know where you I know what you're trying to say you're good you're good keep going okay um It's, but, let, me, let me choose my words carefully. Okay, go ahead. Uh, no, don't, don't, it, don't, you don't have to choose too carefully, just speak. Okay. Well, in a vacuum, if, or well, in this world, I would rather have someone I care about in a um, privileged position because otherwise, you know, it, it's a fact that, you know, a lot of, like, Black people in America are, um, unfortunately, they can be oppressed and, and bad things can happen to them just because they're black, right? So if I had the choice of, of making someone white or black, you know, that I care about, I'd, I'd go white. Uh, Do you go white? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Dude, that's totally reasonable. Is that, is that, hang on, is there, where's the other microphone? Do you have? Oh, dude, is that reasonable to you, bro? I say yeah. It would. I mean, is that reasonable coming from a white guy? It's like yeah. Go ahead, choosing a white guy. That makes sense. Coming, I could like from his perspective, I can see that making sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Liani, <laughs> what about what she said? Hey, let me ask you this question. What about what she said? Does that make sense to you? But she said about, yeah, I'm not really big on comp, like, I don't want to be talking to people all the time. Yeah, just pick the white dude. I mean, we all have, like, our own preferences. 
So what she wants, I can't like say one way or another. No, but that's not what she said. Say again what you said, because what you said was actually really, I thought really insightful. Okay, if you had put a Hispanic guy up here, to be blunt, either him or the Hispanic guy would have won for me, because I'm from a place, a city, where those are the two most norm, like, you know, the, the biggest racial people there. And in Miami Beach, that's the most common. So it has to do with the fact of where I would choose to then raise the kid and what would be the norm there, because that would cause the least amount of questions. and. But Abdullah, you know. he kind of could pass. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, his not his nose couldn't pass. No, because the bridge of your nose. Can you wait? Can you just see that? The bridge of his nose is it's too thin up here. So you wouldn't he wouldn't pass it. He wouldn't. You know, he wouldn't pass as Hispanic, right? No. But he but he would in, in other ways, like from the side. But and if you listen, if you mixed your egg with Aaron here. That's like white black mix. Like he'd be, that's Hispanic. There it is, man. He'd be killing it. You have a nice brown kid. You have like, t you have like two C hair. You'd be killing it, you know? I think you picked out the guy in the end for me. I simply said I would choose the guy with the least confrontation, and you picked him out for me. Okay, okay, I got you. But I like what you said. No, you're right. No, but, no, but I'm actually going to, I would have said what you first said, that's what I would say. I would be like, yeah, I'd pick, the, I'd probably pick the white that guy. Would make and yeah, I'd a probably pick a, the I'd probably pick a light. I want someone who looks closest to me, because okay. it's an. Well, we're going to talk next class maybe. I think we're going to talk to a couple like some cross racial adoption stuff, but it just gets annoying all the time just to be telling your story constantly to strangers. So if you had a kid that looked like Aaron or Abdullah, either either of you, and you had to tell the story, I was like, no, no, he's really my child. Like, he is my job. No, you mean you, he's birthed Yeah, 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 I, I did. But it's like you'd have to be telling that story, and then it just gets old after a while. So I'm with you on that. I feel the same way. Yeah. It's an interesting story, though, right? Because can I go back to you? Like, wait, hang on one second. This is the final, final thing. Yo. Yo, hang on. Um, it really is an interesting story because we, especially coming from Miami, Bucks County, it doesn't really matter. We're told that not to not see color, to look at these three men right here and just see them as human beings and it doesn't matter. But the truth is, and as we live our sociological lives, it does matter, like the day to day. So, any, so I, like, I really like what you said. I think you're right, I'm spot on, I, I'm with you. And I like what you said. It's like, why, yeah, why? Dude, awesome, man. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Thanks, gentlemen. Hey, uh...